Thank you for being here. Uh, are, you, are you well? Are you good? Are you in a good mood? This, it's been a funny old month, May, hasn't it? A funny old month. Are we, are we glad that Osama bin Laden is dead? Are we cheerful about that? That's, that's a bit of, it's not quite a full throaty cheer, is it? It's not, a, it's not like a proper, yeah, we can't quite bring ourselves to do it with the same gumption as the Americans, can we? We're not like, you know, yes, he was an evil man. I'm glad he's dead, but I'm still not ready to go into the streets and chant the name of my own country again and again. <laughs> USA, USA, can't quite do that. I mean, well done, congratulations on killing him, but you are vulgar sometimes, aren't you? <laughs> it's a weird thing that all, because you, know, he's, he's, you know, it's good that he's dead, and it's, you know, he's a bad man and all that, but, and then the reports that are coming out, like apparently, apparently he shoved his wife in front of him, shoved his wife to the SEAL team. How did he think that was going to work? Did he really, how horny did he think the SEAL team were gonna be when they arrived? <laughs> oh, this one, she's a looker, this'll distract them. That must have been a weird thing. She got, she got pushed in front of him, and then, and then they shot her in the leg, which must have been a weird day for her, Osama bin Laden's wife. Because from the reports I've heard, that would, be, that would be the first time she ever got to walk in front of him. So, you know, that would be, be a weird old day. Oh, this is, oh, are you kidding me? No wonder you would maybe walk behind you. It's dangerous in front, isn't it? And I don't, it's, it's a difficult thing to know how to feel about the death of a human being. The one thing I'm absolutely certain about on my feelings of the death of Osama bin Laden is that I wish they hadn't killed him on the Monday. I wish they'd killed him on the Friday so that those of us not interested in weddings would have had some fucking news to watch. That would have been nice. <laughs> I don't mean to be, sound all anti-royal or anything like that. She's just, she's just been in Ireland. We're, we're all friends now and all that, but you know. That royal wedding, that went on just a bit too long. That, even like days beforehand, then you're watching the news and it's like, well, it's three days of the royal wedding. And I'm talking to some sad folks camped out in the mall. How you going? <laughs> what have you got here? We've got a tent. Really, what's in the tent? S sandwiches and a sleeping bag. Fascinating. <laughs> is the news on? This isn't news, this is camping live. <laughs> There's a reason camping is not in the Olympics, because it's a shit spectator sport. It's not. <laughs> And I say this as a man who's, who's into camping. I love a bit of that. I love the, I love the backpacking and camping and all. I've become very outdoorsy since, uh, since I got married. Yeah, there's the thing. But I have. <laughs> no, I love a bit of backpacking. I love a bit of tent life, you know? The only thing that's depressing sometimes about, about, about backpacking is, is when you wake up in your tent and you know that the first thing you have to do that day is put on wet socks. <laughs> that's a depressing way to start the day, knowing that you've got to put on wet socks. But, you know, you've got to wank into something. Am I right? You know I'm right, Newcastle. You know I'm right. So, what? What? I don't want to compromise the insulated properties of my sleeping bag. I love the feeling in the audience after that joke. There's a real feeling of, we thought we were getting a nice joke about camping. Instead, we got a horrible joke about wanking. Which is a weird attitude to have, considering more people in this room wank than camp. When you think about it. You know, we want to joke about the thing we don't do and that can't relate to, but aren't ashamed of, please. Thank you. Oh. So, Friday night. Friday night's always a good night for entertaining an audience. I don't want to make you sound like sluts, but you're easy. <laughs> Fridays and Saturdays, piece of piss, because it's the weekend. The weekend is here, he said, like a man with a job where the weekend means anything. But the weekend, <laughs> people enjoy the weekend. Uh, whereas, whereas Tuesdays can be an absolute pig for getting an audience going. I remember I was doing a gig a while back in New Zealand, in Auckland, Tuesday nights, trying to get the audience warmed up, coming along, going, come on, Tuesday, yay, we've got work in the morning, we don't give a shit. Come on, Tuesday, people, make some Tuesday noise. They were not getting on board the Hey, It's Tuesday bus. <laughs> they sat there quite pissed off about the fact that it was Tuesday. It took ages to get them going. It was like 15 minutes in before I got my first decent laugh. And then I only discovered after I left the stage, only after the show was over, did I find out it was Wednesday. <laughs> And what's funny is no one said a word. No one said a word. If that had happened here, it happened somewhere like Newcastle. If, I, if I'd done that here, if I'd gone, come on, Saturday, make some noise. But in a second, it's Friday, you fucking prick. But no. <laughs> Kiwis are quite happy to sit there and let you labor under a misapprehension for the entire length of your show. <laughs> Nobody said a word, it was hilarious. And I realize now, the reason it took so long to get them going, the reason it took, uh, you know, it took, took so long before I got my first decent laugh is not that everyone was pissed off that it was Tuesday, because it wasn't. Because <laughs> they're all probably just sitting there thinking to themselves, just how good is this observational comedian going to be? <laughs> Who doesn't know what day of the week it is? That seems like a very basic thing to observe, really, doesn't it? We've paid for babysitters and everything. We've been done. 
You expect your comedian to know things like the day of the week or the name of the town he's in, basic stuff like that. It's very annoying when you pay somebody money and then they don't know the basics. You know, I, I, I've had this problem with plumbers, Newcastle. I, I have to say, I've, I, I, there's, there's a particular brand of, of central heating boiler, a particular make of boiler that, that plumbers find particularly difficult to get parts for and particularly difficult to fix. And it's fucking all of them, right? <laughs> Every flat, every house I've ever lived in, whether I've rented it, owned it, from shithole to nice place, has, there's been a boiler, and at some point it's gone wrong, and I've had to call somebody who purports to be some sort of boiler man, and then it would turn out that I had the very boiler that he finds particularly difficult to get parts for. Now, am I just unlucky, or are plumbers evil lying bags of shit? What do you think? <laughs> do we have any plumbers in? Any plumbers in tonight? Yeah. Yes? You're a plumber, sir? How long have you been a plumber? 20 years. 20 years. <laughs> Is that an estimate? <laughs> Come on! It's a long, 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 long. It's, that, it's that look you give a boiler. You know that look, though? Do you, is that the first thing you learn at plumbing school? Is how to look at a boiler like, oh, you got one of them. <laughs> you know, and then they look at you like, what were you thinking, buying a house with this boiler in it, honestly? It's like, it's a boiler. You're the boiler, man. This should work out just dandy. No, but you've got one of them. <laughs> Stop looking at it like that. Stop looking at it like I just strapped a baboon to the wall and hoped for the best. <laughs> what you got there is a baboon. <laughs> Get on that wall and eat my water. <laughs> Your boiler just threw shit at me. <laughs> it's annoying when people are, you know, don't know the basics. You know, I got very annoyed last year at the entire British news media, pretty much, because. Uh, See, we had, that, uh, we had that election. I say we, you know, I live here, I pay me taxes here. You know, there was an election with a hung parliament followed by a coalition government, right? Now, coalition governments happen all the time, all over the world, particularly all over Europe. We've had coalition governments in Ireland for years. Never did us any harm. <laughs> uh, I'm not saying they're a good thing or a bad thing, I'm just saying they're not a weird thing. Now, I know they don't happen very often in Britain, but don't you think, if, all right, if you're the average man in the street in Britain, you might be a bit thrown by the notion of a coalition government. But don't you think, if you're a newsreader, or a political journalist, a reporter, you should be kind of across this shit? But you turned on the news after the election, and it was like, they were completely bamboozled by it. They're like, oh, look at this, there's two of them. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, <laughs> is it your first day on the job, is it? <laughs> this is all very odd, isn't it? What is this, a coalition? What is this? Because <laughs> it's just a coalition government. It's not that odd, it's not that weird. Oh, no, it's very odd, it's very strange. This is very weird and strange and scary. No, do you know what's odd and weird and strange? A democracy with a fucking queen. That's actually pretty out there. <laughs> but you've wrapped your head around that one for long enough. So, Piers Morgan, who's a cock anyway. But Piers Morgan. <laughs> The show is called Crowd Pleaser. I'm happy to take a round of applause for pointing out that Piers Morgan is gone. <laughs> but Piers Morgan was on Question Time. And he's going, will someone please explain to me how it is that the leader of the party that came third is now Deputy Prime Minister? Because I'm going to explain. Aren't you supposed to be explaining this shit to us? Because <laughs> if you don't understand how it works, what are you doing on my telly, you sweaty face bollocks? <laughs> Were you an only child, Piers? Is that the problem? Is that why you can't get your head around the concept of sharing, is it? <laughs> I quite like, I have to say, I quite like the fact that, uh, you know, the, the, the coalition, you know, the, the, the Liberal Democrats are just involved. It's just nice. It doesn't feel, it feels a bit like the Liberal Democrats' mums had a word with the Tories' mums, doesn't it? It's just, <laughs> ah, go on, let them play. Go on, just give them a go. Just <laughs> let them pretend to help. Go on. <laughs> if they break it, then you have an excuse for not letting them play with it again. I quite like the Liberal Democrats. They did fuck the students in the arse, but <laughs> who amongst us hasn't done that in their time? So, <laughs> it would seem very hypocritical of me to have a pop at them over that. 